Good morning, I'm Pastor Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to give you our daily devotion. And I want to talk to you about stillness today. I want to talk to you about busyness and uh, some of the things that uh, the pitfalls, the traps that we fall into that make it hard for us to be obedient to some of the advice that Scripture gives us. For example, Psalm 4 and 4 says, Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. In Psalm 46 and 10 it says, Be still and know that I am God. Those bits of advice of being still, of meditating, of being quiet in the ways that Scripture calls us to can be incredibly difficult in the world in which we live, the culture in which we live. We live in a culture that has created all kinds of means of convenience. Um, call them time-saving devices and there's lots of things that have been marketed as a time-saving device from the telephone to the microwave to of course you know and more recently computers and smartphones and a lot of various things like that and there's no question that a lot of these have been amazing amazing inventions you know I hold a, you know an iPad here in my hands that is such an amazing tool for me that I use all of the time for a variety of things and so you know a very very flexible tool but while it does save us time while it does add convenience all of these various conveniences mean that we can do more than what we have ever done before you know whereas before we had all of these time-saving devices a fairly simple task might take a good portion of a day but a person that was doing that let's say if you go back a few generations someone that was going to you know to draw water to do some cleaning and then to do some cooking you know and had to build up the fire and maybe had to gather some of the ingredients for the meal they could spend a good portion of the day making that meal however they wouldn't feel guilty over that they wouldn't feel as if they had squandered their time or not used it wisely because there would be a recognition that they are working steadily they're trying to accomplish goals and so maybe the goals that they set were less demanding and less high than what we might in modern life but they were often the kinds of activities that would lend themselves to some mental stillness that even while working and preparing something they would be able to maybe think about the things of the Lord, to meditate on the Lord, to meditate on a piece of scripture, or to just be alone with their thoughts and maybe alone with some words of prayer to God. We have many time-saving devices, but the problem with that is that with every new way to save time and to make one more efficient in terms of their output, there comes an increasingly great expectation of the amount of responsibilities that one can do in a given day. I know that there are certainly days where I look back at all the things that I have managed to accomplish on that day and I'm shocked that I was able to do all of those things. But it also means that if I am not careful, I allow things to continue to be dumped onto my plate and the to-do list to get increasingly longer because I think, well, I've got these, these tools that can help me to do things faster, to do them more efficiently. But rather than that creating more time for stillness, more time for meditation, more time for prayer, what it often means is that I just create more slots to add more things onto my plate add more slots into my calendar because I say, well, yeah, I, I can find time. I can make all those things happen. And so we live in a day where the idea of being still is almost antithetical to the way that we're wired, to the way that we think. And of course, the other downside is that with something like a smartphone around all the time, and you see it very often, particularly in young people, that any moment where they're not engaged in something else, the smartphone is out and they're checking Instagram or they're responding to text or they're playing a game. They're doing something on that and there are never any moments of stillness. So part of the problem in a modern world is that we deceive ourselves into thinking that being still, being quiet, has no value. That that is time wasted when it should be spent filling it with something else, be it entertainment or more responsibilities. So when God commands us to be still, it can be a really hard thing for us to embrace. But I want to share with you a little bit of insight about stillness today. 
and uh, this idea was birthed right in the middle of preaching another message where I preached about inertia and about movement within our universe and so I want to to recount a few of those statistics to let you know that even if you were to stop everything that you're doing right now and be still you might feel like I'm wasting time I and you know your mind cannot quiet your mind cannot become still because you're thinking about all the things that you should do you know be they household chores or things for your work or even things of ministry oh I should be doing this or I should be reaching out to that person and it just seems like a wasted opportunity to be still to be mentally still but do you know even if you were to sit still for a little while a few hours do you realize that our universe continues to move all around us? Our planet is rotating, it's spinning at a speed of around 1600 kilometers an hour, about a thousand miles an hour. Our planet is in constant rotation. It's also moving rapidly through space and its rotation around the sun. So not only are we spinning this way right now, but we are hurtling through space at an even faster speed of 107,000 kilometers an hour, somewhere around 65,000 miles an hour. Our planet is hurtling through space. But in any given day, even if you were to be still that entire day and move not a bit, you will have moved through space some 2.6 million kilometers just in the motion of our planet moving throughout space our solar system is moving through our galaxy at an even faster speed of 720,000 kilometers an hour and of course it's not just the solar system even the galaxy itself is in motion at a similar rate of speed in other words even when we are still we are still moving. And what's more important, even when I pause and I become still for a few minutes, it doesn't mean that God has stopped working, that an infinite God has stopped moving. You see, my problem, maybe your problem too, is that we think that our lack of activity means that nothing is getting done. We think that if we stop working, then God stops working that if we aren't constantly in motion then God ceases to be in motion you see we often confuse activity with productivity but in reality there are moments when being still and thinking about God or calling upon his name or trusting in him are actually the things that would accomplish the most in that given situation and often we in all of our activity we actually don't accomplish anything worthwhile during that time. We just stress ourselves out. Oh, that we could learn to wait upon the Lord. And that leads us to one of the most beautifully poetic, powerful pieces of scripture in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. It says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint See, the Word of God teaches us that while we have limits, God doesn't. And there may be moments when we have fatigued ourselves to a place to where we can't move, any, not, not even one step further. But if we could learn in those moments that our God, He has no limits. He never gets faint. He never gets weary. His understanding is limitless. His power is limitless. And so if we could learn to wait on the Lord sometimes. That when we're faced with a crisis, rather than asking God to do something about it and then immediately trying to do everything we can to solve it on our own, if we would ask God to do something and then wait on Him to act, how many situations would be resolved better? Maybe even resolved more quickly, but certainly resolved better. Because God's ways are not our ways. Scripture teaches us that. But God's ways are better. They're infinitely better. And we have to learn that even if we are still, 
God remains in motion. He isn't dependent on us for all of the activity, for all of the motion, but rather if we can learn to wait upon Him, to be still and know that He is God. You see, the beautiful thing about waiting upon the Lord, about being still and allowing God's space to work, is that when God comes through, and He will, you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that was God. That wasn't me. That wasn't because I can solve all the world's problems or I have all the answers, but I do have a God who cares for me, who loves me, and who is willing, ready, and able to stay in motion and to take care of my needs even when I need to be still and quiet in my spirit. I pray that this speaks to your heart today and inspires you to take some moments of stillness today in the midst of all the activities Set the iPad, set the iPhone, set the distractions aside, and wait on the Lord. I'll tell you this, in my morning devotions, there comes a time, if I'm wise, to where all the other things that I'm doing, I set all that stuff aside, and I look up at the sky or look up at the trees, and I take a deep breath, And I just have a moment of gratitude for God's blessings, for God's favor, for the fact that God loves me and that God provides for me. And invariably, my spirits lift in that moment. It's a moment of stillness. And I need to be wise enough to have more of them. I'm a person of activity. I like to accomplish a lot of things. But it's in those moments of quietness that my spirit is renewed. And if I can wait on the Lord, I will run and not grow weary. I will walk and not faint. God bless you. I pray that this speaks to your heart today. Have a wonderful, blessed day.